Hello there everyone, my name is Clink, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. So today we are here in the Forest Haven. Uh, last time we did the trade sequence with Zunari to get the magic armor. Today we're going to be grabbing some forest water. Uh, you can use this as many times as you want as long as it's within 30 minutes. Um, so we have 30 minutes of the once this timer starts going down to go around and water all of the withered trees on the map. There's going to be eight of these. That is our goal for today. It's our only goal for today is to just complete this side quest. Uh, so we're going to head back over to the King of Red Lions and start sailing around to do just that. Um, I'm not sure if we've been to all of them quite yet already, but uh, we have seen quite a few of them. and I, I do know where they're all at, so... I mean, we should have seen them all, considering, you know, we've mapped out the entire world, but uh, the first one is going to be here on the Cliff Plateau Isles. So you might remember us doing this grotto much earlier on in the game. I got a treasure chart out of this, I believe. Uh, we want to come back here and go into that grotto, so I should probably pull out the Deku Leaf as we do need it to get through here, and we will head straight through. So. Uh, this quest is really odd. Um, it's kind of like the previous one where we were going around sailing and just going to the various spots on the map. But this one's been heavily altered in the HD version as opposed to how it was in the original game. Uh, in the HD version, you have 30 minutes on your timer instead of 20. Couple that with the fact that on top of that change, you have the swift sail that moves at double the speed of the regular sail and you don't have to stop to change wind direction which to be fair the timer didn't go down during that anyway uh but there's a lot more than just the time limit increasing you really have a lot more time to finish this quest on the hd version uh, so it's really not too hard of a quest thanks to that uh we're just gonna go on ahead and glide across here head up and talk to, uh, well, you don't even need to talk to the Koroks. You essentially just come up here, you pour some water onto the tree, let it grow, and then you walk away. The Koroks really don't have anything to say. Like, if we talk to the Korok, thank you very much. There's seven more. Just go pour, and you have that much time left. That's all that the Koroks really tell you. So, uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. Uh, we're just going to jump back onto the King of Red Lions, and we're going to continue sailing. So... Our next destination is going to be Shark Island, which is right here. The closest island we can warp to for, for that is the Southern Fairy one. So we're going to head over there and then just sail over. It, like I said, it's kind of similar to the trade quest where we're just going to have to do a lot of sailing. That's really all we're going to do today. Um, but much like the trade quest, I'm not really going to cut any of this out because I want to show the entire quest and how you do this. So. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Thankfully, you can warp directly to some of these. And honestly, if you're pretty fast, you can realistically finish the whole quest in eh, about 15 minutes and have 11 minutes remaining on your timer. Or only be 11 minutes into the timer. So it's not too bad as long as you know where to go. It could really help where as you're going and filling out the map maybe you wrote down notes on which islands had these um much like what i have next to me now but you know you wouldn't really think to do that maybe when you're playing the game blind unless you like started this quest or something but uh we're gonna get out i think you actually need to get onto the island from here and here's our next uh tree to water I think we could do this island, but I'm actually not going to do anything with Shark Island. Because I, I know what the reward is for all of it, and it's just rupees, so <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, but you can do this, like, big enemy gauntlet if you hit all these switches around the island fast enough. Uh, so once we've done this one, we are going to go to Great Fish Isle. I essentially just have a route that is the fastest route in terms of just warp or fewest warps that we really can do uh i mean technically you could do zero warps i guess but you know i'm trying to do this just efficiently that way we're not spending tons and tons of time doing this quest 
because it's already a long enough quest anyways. So the one here on Greatfish Isle is actually going to be on top of this little spire that we needed to use to get to the heart piece earlier on in the game. So we'll go ahead and stop here and get on to this little spiral to do this. So yeah, this quest is uh, kind of underwhelming though, honestly, in comparison to something like the Zunari quest where you get a full cool unique item or just how a lot of the quests on windfall were just like smaller nice ones this one feels like a really high effort quest and all you really get out of it is a heart piece which is a little unfortunate but oh well uh next is going to be needle rock isle so we need to go southwest so that's going to be this way right yeah uh and that'll be our next one which I think, was it Needle Rock Isle that actually had something else we could have done here? Uh, there was one island that had a spot to uh, melt some ice. And it might have been this one. I don't really want to... I'd rather not make this the part where I'm doing that. But like, I don't really want to have to come back here. And I don't know, maybe it's something cool. Nah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to get over it. There we go. That's what I'll do. Get over it. I'm also trying to keep an eye on the moon cycle to uh, make sure that it's not um, a full moon so that we can finish that other side quest with the guy on Windfall. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to forget about some stuff, but uh, yeah, our withered tree is going to be over here. So we'll roll over pour some water on there and we're halfway done already so we're doing pretty good our next stop is going to be the private oasis which you know we haven't really spent too much time with that yet but we do have the deed for that uh but it's just something i'm going to be doing much later since it's part of the triforce quest so we leaving it for that and um one thing i do want to say is this is going to be the final side quest part for a little bit um next episode is going to be getting to the earth temple and then we'll do the earth temple i feel like it's been quite a while at this point of just doing side quests and you know it's been a while since the last full dungeon which was tower of the gods so i think uh i think it's getting to about the point where i should do some more uh main quest things and i'm actually gonna grab these 50 rupees on the way over um as much as I like doing side quests and stuff, I, I think it's about time we do that. Although honestly, a lot of the game from here on out should hopefully be main quests. I think I'll maybe have three parts between the Earth and Wind Temples of uh, optional stuff. We'll see, because I, I think I'm going to do a part where we go around and we do uh, the reefs. I think I'm going to do a part where we go and play some mini games. And maybe I'll do a part where we finish up everything on Windfall because there's still a couple things that we can do like showing the guy that picture of the full moon or um, the beautify the town side quest. That's like the last big side quest there, I think. I'm going to have to pull up a side quest list and look at them, uh, but I'm pretty sure I've done most of the big ones at this point in time. Um, so we're going to head and hop out of the boat here to uh, pour some water onto this and honestly if I got through this quest fast enough I was like yeah maybe I'll do some other ones today we'll see um but let's go ahead pour some water onto this one so I've kind of been like mapping out in my head what we're gonna do with what at this, at the rate we're going, I'm honestly expecting to finish the game pretty close to part 50. You might be thinking, what the heck, aren't we on like part 30? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff in this game, it feels like. It's like just now setting in on me that this is probably the longest let's play I've done up to this point, or will be, um, by the time it finishes. Both in pure part count and just sheer runtime, I think. Because uh, my current longest one is Pikmin 3, because I've done all the side modes and everything. Um, by the way, we need to next go to Eastern Fairy Island. So we're going to go this way. 
Um, but if you just said it was the main story, I guess my longest would be either Ocarina of Time or Pikmin 2, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, those are, because like the Pikmin 2 parts are a little bit longer, but there's two less of them. Oh wait, this is Eastern Triangle Island. Uh. Oh wow, I'm going the complete wrong way. I don't know why. I saw Eastern and just started going in a direction. Whoops, that's my bad. Um. But yeah, this is this game's, you know, it's pretty long. Um, the Zelda games only really get longer after Wind Waker as well, at least when it comes to console entries. Like, Link Between Worlds and, like, handheld stuff and Minish Cap really aren't too long. Those, those I think I will, when I do them, those should be, like, no more than, like, 30 parts, really. Um, but yeah, this game's pretty big, and then Twilight Princess just gets bigger. I would say Skyward Sword's about the same size, and then, well, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are just there. <laughs> they're, just, they're just sitting in the background like, hey, how you doing? Hope you're ready to spend like 80 videos on on us over here. And that's even making them a little longer, probably. I don't think Breath of the Wild will be that many parts, but I would bet Tears of the Kingdom would be. Um Yeah, this is this is definitely the longest one I've done up to this point, it seems like. Um Cause I'm still trying to make the like, you know, it it's uh it's a little weird finding the balance of making them uh, long enough to get progress done, but splitting them into watchable chunks to where it's not like hour-long videos. Um, so that is number six. Next up is going to be the Mother and Child Islands, uh, which is the same story as with the Traveling Merchants. We need to work over to Tingle Island and sail over there to them. But... Um... It's, uh, I, I've been, I've been really enjoying this game, again, like, it's, I don't know, it, it's kind of funny, Wind Waker is just, it's a weird game to me, because it's a game I, ha I honestly have a lot of problems with this game, um, I think it has a lot of flaws, I, don't get me wrong, I think Wind Waker is a really great game, but it's also one that I think has a lot of issues, I think it's one of the more flawed, uh, Zelda games, but, uh, it's one that I can't help but just still love most of the journey for, so it's uh it's been fun playing this one so far, and we still have a long way to go, but I'm I'm feeling pretty good about the journey ahead, especially because honestly I think some of the best parts are near are in the end portion here. The remaining dungeons are the best ones in the game. Um, the ending of Wind Waker, which not talking about too much yet, but personally. Uh, is one of my favorite climaxes of the entire series. It probably was my favorite, honestly, up until uh, Tears of the Kingdom came out. So, uh, I'm, I actually really like Ganondorf in this game and his character and his fight uh, in Wind Waker. So I'm very excited uh, for when we get to all of that. But uh, from here, we don't need to warp anymore. We can sail straight over to our final location, which is going to be the Star Island. Um... I think I did the grotto on Star Island already. Yeah, I did. I do remember bombing the hole open. Uh, so we're going to face this way, I think. Yeah, because it should be right north. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's kind of a little bit of what to expect from the rest of this, probably. Um, honestly, I'm hoping to get around like 45 parts. That's what my ideal goal is. Uh, but I'm expecting closer to 50, just because I don't know how long it's going to take me to do the Triforce quest. My original goal was to do it in three or four parts, but I think one of them I'm going to have to split into like two, just because it's like so long to go through this one thing, which we'll get to. Um, and it has a pretty good stopping point about halfway through it to where I could do that. Um... But we'll see, because most of the Triforce pieces really don't take that long to go pick up. And as you can see, our timer is still above 20 minutes. So we completed the quest in under 10 minutes, according to the timer, which this video has been going for a little under 15, which is pretty darn good, actually. Um, so we'll go on ahead, get this tree sprouted, and once you do the last one, 
else will pop a piece of heart, which I think this is going to get us another heart container. Uh, really nice to pick up before we go do the Earth Temple, so there we go. There is yet another heart piece. Um, I don't want to make this part extremely short, so what we're going to do is open up some of these treasure charts real quick that I can open, because uh, we've gathered a couple at this point. I should have opened these before these quests so I could pick them up on the way, but I think we should just go around and collect a few of these today, um, which we can do nine, and I know I saw the mother and child Isles, so we can do 29 since we're right next to it. We'll go do that. I might try to do some of these just as we're going along, because I think I'd like to collect a lot of the treasure charts that I at least obtain. Uh, while I'm not going for all the treasure charts, the ones I pick up, I might as well get the heart pieces and the rupees I can get out of them, because uh, the rupees will be helpful for stuff like the Triforce charts and buying the stuff from Beetle, so I might as well. And whoa, excuse me. So I'll probably pick up one or two of these today, and then we'll head over to the Earth Temple, because I'm going to head over to the island. We're probably not going to get to the Earth Temple next time. Um... We're going to be meeting the the sage and just getting to it uh but then the earth temple will be the part after that so there's our treasure chart right there so we'll go on ahead sail over here and grab that come on be a heart piece please please be a heart piece I'm, I, I never will complain about just finding more heart pieces so Okay, money, whatever. Uh, the Needle Rock one is gonna bother me if I don't do that one, so I'm gonna get that one done. Which, Needle Rock... No, this is Horseshoe, right? Or was, or is it Horseshoe that I need to go to? I'll have to, I'll have to look at the treasure charts. We'll see. We shall see. Um... That's Paw Print Island. Oh no, we already have Needle Rock. This is uh, this is gonna be Horseshoe then, right? Yeah. Okay, Horseshoe is what I want anyways, so. It's all good with me. And I see some money that I would like to pick up. So, there. I am a little over, I don't care that much. <laughs> we got another shot though. There's another one right here, perfect. All right, we'll put away the sail. There. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Easy peasy. And onwards, which we're sailing down south. I want to be sailing this way. Because that is the island up ahead there. Uh, looks like we have one of the quarter moons. I can't tell if that's the waning? No, no, it's definitely got to be waxing if it's getting larger. I'm pretty sure I got the stuff from that. I don't know. Uh, treasure chart, where is your little beam? There it is on the other side. So we're going to do is do that nice little turn. Right here. I was a little worried I overshot it, honestly, but no, there we go. We got it nice and easy. Silver Rupee, all right. And let's go ahead and sail towards the Earth Temple. So uh, we have these two spots marked on our map. The Earth Temple is the... Oh crap, I actually forgot which one it is. Okay, it's the, the southern one. Okay. What the? I definitely had my stick aimed upwards. Okay. Uh, so we'll head over to Alza and then we'll sail over to it. Nice and easy, but... Yeah, we're, we're finally getting close to more dungeon crawling. Yeah! This is part... 28? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit my goal of... Uh, getting to the Earth Temple on part 30. That When I was, like, doing Forsaken Fortress, I was like, hopefully, if all goes according to plan, 
part 30 will be the Earth Temple, so um I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. Which the thing to know about the Earth Temple and the Wind Temple is like they're a decent chunk longer than the previous dungeons, so I'm expecting those parts to be like 25, 26 minutes each. Uh, they're definitely on the longer end of uh, episodes of this series, which is kind of funny because the next part is probably not going to be very long because um, it's just going to be us getting the Earth Sage and bringing them over to the dungeon. But uh, since we're here, I shall go on ahead and end this video here. And I will see you guys next time where we will be making our way to the Earth Temple. Bye bye.